today I'm going to show you how to take an asset from Quixel Bridge in Unreal and fracture it in Houdini and bring it back into the engine. Hey, how's it going? My name is Jason Johnston. I'm a VFX director here at Beyond FX. For this tutorial, you will need to have a copy of Unreal with Quixel Megascans as well as a copy of Houdini. I will not be going over the basics of Houdini in this tutorial. So in Unreal, let's open up the Quixel Bridge window. You can find it under Window Get Content Quixel Bridge. I have it right here. For this example, we're going to bring in this Nordic Beach Rock. First, you need to download it. I already have it downloaded here, and I'm going to add it to the project. This gets added to the Megascans directory. So under here, you'll find the materials as well as the static mesh. If we pull it into the engine, this is what it looks like. So we'll right-click on it, go to Asset Actions, and Export. We're going to export the FBX so that we can bring it into Houdini. We don't need the level of details um, exported over to Houdini, so I'll uncheck that and I will just export that. So going over to Houdini, we'll first put down a geometry node and we'll go inside and we will search and put the node for the labs FBX archive import. In here, we will go over and go to the directory where we've exported that and bring in that FBX. Now it's very big. Let's scale this down with the transform. We've got this here. It also needs to be rooted by negative 90. And you'll see that the topology needs to be adjusted. So what we're going to do here is we're going to um, remesh it. The reason we're remeshing this is because the incoming topology from Quixel Megascans is coarse in some areas and dense in others. And remeshing allows us to create a nice, evenly spaced topology that will look better when we fracture it. Let's put it down to something like that. And if we go back and we look at this transform here and we look at the UVs, um, this is what they are looking like coming from Quixel. But once we, we remesh it, it looks like this. So to fix this, there is a UV transfer tool, Labs UV transfer. And so you plug this into the target geometry and then this over here into the um, source geometry. And so what we get is we get the uh, the existing UVs on the new pieces of geometry. And from there, let's uh, put down a normal node and let's add normals. And next, let's um, put down a material fracture. This is going to fracture the geometry for you. It may take a second. So if you put down an exploded view, you can look at the pieces. And you'll see that the interior faces are very straight and um, don't look very natural like a rock breaking up. So let's fix that. If you go into the RBD material fracture and you go to detail, you can turn on this edge detail and that's going to break up these internal faces here. This detail size, this is how big the internal polygons are. So let's bring it down a little bit and let's also turn up the noise height a little bit higher. This is the amplitude of the noise and let's change the element size, make it a little bit bigger. Okay, cool. So let's go with that. If you adjust this uniform scale, you can see how it will all fit together. So if we go back to the normal, you'll see that we have the, um, the UVs for the external faces, but we don't um, have the UVs for the internal faces. So let's fix that. Let's put down a UV auto seam first. And what we're going to do is we're going to do seams on the inside faces. Let's next put down a UV flatten. And we want to again do the inside faces only, not the external, because we have UVs on the outside. But this auto seam, it created seams for us. And if we middle click, you can see that there's a seams group. We're going to put that into the seams group here. It's probably going to be at the bottom, so we'll do that. And then now let's do the UV layout. And again, we just want to UV layout the inside. And so if we look at the UVs now, and we only look at the inside faces, 
you'll see that they're much better. So now when it goes over to Unreal, we want material slots for the outside and for the inside on separate slots. So let's set that up right now. And so to do that, let's first put down a material network. If we go inside, let's put down two principal shaders. We'll call one insides and we'll call the other one outside. Let's just change this to a different color just for visualization. Okay, so back here, let's put down a material node. And this is going to be for the outside. And for the outside, we're going to assign that material that we just created. So if we go under here, under the material network, and we click on outside, but we want to assign it only to the outside group. So let's click on that. And so now we have that. And if we just duplicate this and attach it, and let's make this the insides and get rid of this group, the inside group, and let's instead point it to the insides here. And so if we take the exploded view, you can see that the insides have the correct material. And this will transfer over as a separate material slot into Unreal. So now to get it ready for the bullet solver, let's put down an assemble. The bullet solver likes the objects to be packed. So on this, let's just create packed, uh, packed primitives. And then let's um, move this up so that it can fall to the ground and break. Let's move it up by two on the Y. And then let's just uh, rotate it, something like that. We'll add the RBD bullet solver. And if you connect this into the geometry and you select this node, and you go here to collision, you can turn on a ground plane. And if you press play, you'll get it falling. Quick little tip here is that it's going to play back at the fastest speed that it can. So in order to get it more accurate, if you click on this node, it will go at the frames per second that you've put in the project settings. So it's a little bit bouncy, so let's go in here. And if we turn off the bounce on the collision, and then we also go into the properties here and turn off the bounce, that will help things a little bit. So the next thing we can do is we can add constraints so that some of these pieces don't break apart so easily. Right now, every single part is falling apart from one another as soon as they break and hit the ground. So the way we can do that, we can do it in a few different ways, but the way I'm going to approach it is if we add a add node and we delete all the geometry, but just keep the points. Let's give us a little bit of space here. And we do a connect adjacent pieces. And we set this to adjacent points. And let's just do two points. So each point is only going to connect up to two other points. So then now we've got to put these constraints into the system. But first we need to do a constraint properties. And so the geometry has to come through the left. The constraints are here in the middle. And we got to make sure that the constraints go into the system. If we click on the constraint properties, these are going to create glue constraints, which are going to hold them on to one another based on the strength. But if enough force is applied to them, they will break apart. So let's set this down to something like 5,000. And if we go in here and we press play, you'll see that some of the pieces are staying together. So that's looking pretty good. So let's um, transform it back up so that we can export it over to Unreal. down at null for easy reference. I'll call this out. OK, so now to export it, if we go over to the out context and we put down a RBD to FBX and we point the node to export to that out node, the end of the chain, and we give it a name. Let's go to here, to the level up and we'll export it. 
We'll export this as it's a skeletal mesh, so let's do the appropriate um, prefix. Um, 1 to 100, and then we'll just press render. So now if we go back to Unreal, if you right click and do import, go up to where you exported it. And then it's going to bring up this window. There's a few things you want to do. The first thing you want to do is you want to make sure that the animations are importing. Um, I think by default they might be toggled off. And then the next thing you want to do is you want to make sure under advanced that import normals and tangents is selected. And I think default is compute normals. So you want to switch this over. So you're going to import all can ignore this warning and you'll see that it brought in the skeletal mesh and here are the two slots the slot names are outside and inside just like we set up in Houdini and it brings in the temp materials that you set up in Houdini as well so let's um, first thing let's set the material to the original material from the rock on the outside and then for the insides let's go back to Quixel bridge and let's go into surfaces and let's do gouge rock cliff. I have this one here. So let's add this. And what we get is this material here. And so if we go back to the skeletal mesh and for the insides, let's point it to that. So let's save that up, go ahead and close this. And if we take that skeletal mesh and we bring it in here, so if you change the animation mode and default is the animation blueprint you change it to animation asset and then you have this animation sequence you put that in there and then just to look at the inside faces we can change this initial position to the end here and we can go over here and we can look but before we look at the shader let's address this problem here this is a bounds problem and so what you can do is on the skeletal mesh you can click and type in bounds you can change the bound scale. I'm gonna change it to five right here. Okay, so let's go back to this material. And so there's a lot of settings that come along with the, the bridge assets that are really great. You can change the tiling. You can give it a little bit of um, more brightness here. So let's um, maybe brighten it up a little bit. And let's change the tiling to maybe something a little bit higher. Yeah. I think that'll work for this example. So we can close that up. So now if we press play, you'll see that we have the animation from Houdini coming into the engine. What's great about this is that you can go back and forth. You say you don't like this, um, the way it's fracturing up, you can go right back to Houdini, change it up, just re-import the mesh, and then it will update automatically. Thanks so much for watching. And don't forget to like and subscribe and stay tuned for more breakdowns and tutorials like this. Thanks.